When it comes to hip hop, few states and regions always get brought up first. You have New York on the East Coast, California on the West, and cities like Chicago, Detroit, and Atlanta holding it down for the rest of the country. But there's one state that you cannot tell the story of hip hop without mentioning, and that's my home state of New Jersey. Often the afterthought when people think of New York, Jersey actually has been creating hip hop culture right there with New York for 50 years. While New York City has been hip hop's home base for its entire lifespan, Jersey has been right there by its side, giving us some of the most talented artists in the history of the culture, and inspiring the world of hip hop. In fact, it goes all the way back to the beginning. In 1979, when Sylvia Robinson started up the first hip hop record label, Sugar Hill Records, it was based in Englewood, New Jersey. And Rapper's Delight, which is known as the first official hip hop record to be distributed on a national level, was made by one New Yorker and two New Jersey natives. Now the original writer of the song has been a point of much contention over the years. There is no denying that this recording from Big Bank Hank, Wonder Mike, and Master G is one of the most important songs in history, and arguably the most iconic hip hop song ever made. After Rapper's Delight was released, it sent a hip hop shockwave throughout the world, but it all led back to the tri-state area. The 80s came to be known as the golden age for hip hop, and that's because of the iconic acts that were finding their voices throughout New York City. But hip hop was already starting to branch out and grow to the rest of the country too. Ice-T is known as one of the pioneers of West Coast gangster rap. He was able to pave the way for the West Coast to be on an even playing field with the East throughout the 90s. But it's little known that Ice-T wasn't born and raised in California. He actually was born in Newark and was raised in Summit, New Jersey. But even though Ice-T was one of the first rappers from New Jersey to make it, he never really repped New Jersey as his home. The first artist to really champion the Garden State as their own was Queen Latifah. If you watched my video on the native tongues, then you know that Queen Latifah was instrumental in building the style of the native tongues, a sound that would become one of the most influential in all of hip-hop. Latifah was born in Newark and was raised primarily in East Orange. She always put on for her own state, even starting up her own label in the 90s called Jersey Kids Records. I believe the label only released one record, being the third Lords of the Underground's record, Resurrection, but the Lords helped bring the story of New Jersey hip hop into the 90s. The Lords of the Underground are a super underrated group from the 90s that were based in Newark at the time. The group holds a special place in the heart of many kids from my generation, as their song Chief Rocka was on the stacked soundtrack to the game NBA Street Volume 2. I always credit this song with being one of the few tracks that originally got me into hip hop back in the day, so it makes me happy to know that this was made by some Jersey cats. And Latifah isn't the only Jersey legend who's intertwined with the Lords. All the way back in 1990, a young artist by the name of Redman was DJing for the group, and he would go on to become the single most important MC in the history of New Jersey. As one of the most respected MCs in the history of hip hop, Redman is New Jersey to his core. Long before he gave us a couple classic albums, he was born and raised in Newark, and even was expelled from Montclair University, which I think makes him the most Jersey on this list. If you only remember one artist that I talk about today, then it has to be Redman. He is the keeper of the funk for hip hop, and the most decorated Jersey MC in history. While I'm on the topic of Redman, who is one of the main Wu-Tang affiliates, I have to mention that the one and only Bobby Digital, aka The RZA, has spent time in Millstone Township, New Jersey. So if we're tallying up the states by most talented artists to live here, and you can add RZA to that list. And on top of that, Q-Tip has been living in Edgewater for a while now, and they even recorded the final Tribe album in Jersey, and I think that solidifies Jersey as top five, and we're just getting started. Keeping it with the 90s Jersey legends, you can't talk about New Jersey hip hop without mentioning the iconic group Naughty by Nature. Formed in the late 80s in East Orange, and originally going by the name The New Style, the group became one of the most popular acts of the 90s, with songs like Feel Me Flow, OPP, and Hip Hop Hooray. The group was mentored by Queen Latifah, who helped the group become New Jersey legends in their own right, and the group's lead MC Tretch will always be known as one of the most talented MCs in hip hop history. Outside of his elite rapping skills, Tretch and Naughty by Nature are known for being some of the closest friends to the legendary Tupac, and they aren't the only Jersey MCs to get close with the West Coast legend. Pac was tight with a few groups over his short career, but before his passing he actually was the lead MC of the group called The Outlaws. The group was formed in Montclair, New Jersey, and featured members from Montclair and Irvington, New Jersey, along with MCs from New York and California. 
the Outlaws are most known for their association with Tupac and were the featured players on one of the most disrespectful diss tracks of all time, Hit Him Up. While the song is most known for Pac's digs at his friend turned rival, the Notorious B.I.G., he also sent shots to Biggie's collaborators Jay-Z, Lil' Kim, Junior Mafia, and one artist who caught straight bullets even though he wasn't a part of the Bad Boy family, and that was the New Jersey artist Chino XL. Chino XL grew up in various parts of New Jersey and caught the wrong side of Pac's attention when he dissed him on the track Riot. But post that beef, Chino XL has become a veteran lyricist who's widely respected for his dope solo career. The Outlaws, who we just went over, are not to be confused with The Outsiders, who is a completely separate group of talented artists that were based in Newark, New Jersey. The Outsiders were a long-lasting group that was close to the Fugees and D12, collaborating with Eminem, who was even considered a member of The Outsiders at times. The group's leader, Pace Wan, was born in the same town as me, New Brunswick, but was based in Newark during The Outsiders days. I was originally introduced to Pace Wan's music through his collaborations with the New Jersey producer Mystic Green, who's from Highland Park, on their 2008 album The Only Color That Matters Is Green, and their 2012 album The Only Number That Matters Is One. And now going from a very underrated MC to one of the highest rated MCs ever born, the illustrious Lauren Hill. Raised in South Orange, New Jersey, Lauryn Hill went on to become one of the most respected and accomplished hip-hop artists in history. And that trajectory was started when she met Praz and Wyclef John and formed the Fugees. Lauryn and Praz met at Columbia High School in Maplewood, New Jersey, and were introduced to Wyclef soon after. The group became arguably the most iconic act on this list, with their first two albums blunted on reality and the score becoming classic outings from the trio leading to the miseducation of Lauryn Hill becoming the single most decorated hip-hop album of all time. Another group of New Jersey legends is the Poor Righteous Teachers, who were based out of Trenton. In the 90s, when rap was growing into the mainstream, groups like the Poor Righteous Teachers were able to carry on the tradition of lyricism and knowledge over everything else. The group's lead MC, Wise Intelligent, is one of the most underappreciated lyricists of the 90s. And before he represented Trenton, he too was born in New Brunswick, where I was born. So his place in hip-hop always means a lot to me. And before I move on to the next group and era, I want to shout out a few other talented Jersey artists from the 90s. You have Science of Life from Piscataway, Milkbone from Perth Amboy, who gave us the classic song Keep It Real, the late great Apache who was also from Perth Amboy, Chill Rob G from Jersey City, Lakim Shabazz and Beneficence from Newark, and of course, the big Gabagool himself, Shaquille O'Neal, who had a pretty short-lived rap career but was born in Newark, so I'll include him here. Speaking of all those artists from Newark, Brick City has been home to some of the most talented artists in New Jersey history, and a prime example of that is the Artifacts. Hailing from Newark, the group consisting of Elda Sensei, Tame One, and DJ Chaos are some of the unsung heroes of hip-hop's underground. The group also went under the name Brick City Kids for a time, so they were repping Newark, New Jersey to the fullest. The group was together from 1989 until 1998 and reunited in 2009, but they also made their own name for themselves in the 10 years in between the artifacts. During that time, Elda Sensei had a really nice solo run, and Tame One became members of two more iconic groups, the Weathermen and the Leak Bros. Moving into the 2000s, the most known New Jersey rapper for the new millennium is definitely Joe Budden. Joe, who is now probably more known as a hip-hop media personality, was one of the most talented rappers out before he hung up his rapping shoes. He was born in New York City and spent some time in North Carolina, but he spent most of his formative years in Jersey City, and still reps Jersey today on his world-famous podcast. And during that same era, a rapper from Newark was tearing it up with Busta Rhymes' Flip Mode Squad, and her name is Ra Digga. Ra Digga is one of the most underappreciated female MCs of all time and carried on the tradition of New Jersey women who are wicked on the mic from Queen Latifah. I actually didn't know that Rod Digga was in New Jersey and before making this video, but it turned out she studied engineering at NJIT, which is pretty cool to learn. In keeping it with rappers from this era, who I didn't know were from the Garden State, Joel Santana, who I always knew was repping Harlem, supposedly spent some time in New Jersey and recorded many of his later albums here. Now I really want to get into the 2010s because that's the era that has some of my favorite artists. But before I do, here's some more notable artists from the aughts. You have Sirius Jones, who's a great battle rapper from Englewood. Just Allah from Camden, who was one of the main members of Jedi Mind Tricks. MC Paul Barman from Ridgewood, who flipped his nerdy persona into a career as a highly respected lyricist. And of course, Al Bial, the Jersey City legend. 
as we start talking about the 2010s, I want to start off by talking about a few producers, because I hadn't touched too much on that side of the art form in this video yet. Clams Casino is a producer from Nutley, New Jersey, who was able to cross over into the mainstream and really shape a lot of what the decade ended up sounding like across the country. He was able to produce for Mac Miller, Lil B, ASAP Rocky, Lana Del Rey, The Weeknd, Big Crit, and many more. And Charlie Heat is from Woodbury, New Jersey. And while he may not be a household name yet, he's worked with many of the biggest artists in the world, most notably Denzel Curry, Lil Uzi Vert, Travis Scott, and even Madonna. Now we've covered a lot of artists so far, but at this point I'd say we're finally at what I'd call the modern landscape of New Jersey hip hop. First up I'm going to talk about an artist who I've talked about a lot on my channel already, the legendary Makami, who's from Newark. Although he started releasing music in the mid aughts, he really began picking up speed around 2017, when he and the god Fahim started to go on their iconic dump god run. And Mak's song Newark, off of FYI, might just be my favorite song named after a New Jersey town. He may be the masked face of New Jersey rappers in this current underground scene, but this movement is rich with super talented MCs. The next artist who is rising the ranks as one of my favorite New Jersey artists ever is an MC named Crime Apple. Raised in Hackensack, New Jersey, Crime is bringing the international world of hip hop back to the Garden State by being an incredible rapper in both English and Spanish switching between the two with ease, making for some truly awesome hip hop. It seems like he releases a new project every couple months, and it's always of the highest quality. Ransom rounds out the big three of heavy hitters for this scene right now. Born in Brooklyn, but he moved to Jersey City when he was eight. He and the MC Hitchcock formed the A-Team and became key players in the mid 2000s Jersey City mixtape circuit. After a co-sign from his fellow Jersey City legend, Joe Budden, his career has been on a steady trajectory over the last 15 years or so becoming one of the most reliable and talented rappers around. His work with Nicholas Craven is really what made me a fan, and he seems like he's only just hitting his prime now. Sticking with the current underground scene, there's a number of dope artists who are coming up now that are getting ready to write their own pages in Jersey hip hop history. Perhaps my favorite of these artists is Fatboy Sharif. He's lived all around the state, but mostly calls Rahway his home. And in just a few short years, he's been able to craft a new lane for himself melting away the expected sound of most artists and creating a showcase of abstract lyricism. A New Jersey producer who he frequently collaborates with is Roper Williams, who will definitely be one of the premier sound architects of the underground for this next generation. Another dope producer is DJ Bugavelli, and then you have Freddie Stone from Garfield who put out a project last year called New Jersey is for Lovers, so you know I had to give him a special shout out on here. I also have to mention Micah Wright out of Jersey City. He was one of the first artists I was put onto when I started this channel, and his catalog on Bandcamp is growing into one of the hidden gems of the underground scene these days. There's a dope lyricist from Edison and Tom's River who goes by the name of Lyrics, and one of my favorite up and coming artists, Nah Really, actually just moved to New Jersey recently, so we've got another amazing lyricist and producer in the Jersey family now. On top of them you have Vincent the Owl out of Jersey City, Brain Orchestra and Subject 5 out of Elizabeth, and then 8 9 The Brainchild and Papo 2004, who are quickly becoming two of my favorite artists around. All these artists are the future of New Jersey rap, and I'm really excited to see where they bring the scene in the future. An underappreciated artist who really reps Jersey in recent years is Wretch. He, along with his frequent collaborator Dash, seem to always be ahead of the curve on what people consider dope these days and they're able to tow the line between the underground post marsburg style on albums like Polo Sporting Goods, and also a more trap-oriented sound on projects like Richer Than The Ops. Speaking of people who are ahead of the curve and trendsetters, Odd Future is one of the most important acts for my generation, and while most of the group's members are from California, Haji Beach was actually born in Trenton, so Jersey stays infecting the rest of the country. Keeping it with some more crossover acts, 070 Shake is actually from North Bergen, New Jersey. Shake became one of the breakout artists from Kanye's 2018 Wyoming sessions, and she's put together a dope solo career since. Topaz Jones is an artist who definitely needs more love from mainstream audiences. He's from Montclair and has a few songs that became the soundtrack to my college days. I love a lot of his songs, but his song Tropicana is one of my favorite tracks ever. Mir Fontaine has been putting on for New Jersey for a while now, even naming his second album after his hometown Camden. He occupies the space sort of in between the mainstream and underground, able to spit and sing over various types of production. Another artist sort of in this same lane is Sue Surf from Newark. 
Most of his stuff seems like it's on the trap side of things, so I'm not too familiar with his work, but I do know that he has an album with features from Benny the Butcher, Jim Jones, and Dave East, so it looks like his sound is pretty adaptable. And staying with the trap side of things, Fatboy SSE from Irvington has been on the come up for the past few years with some cool singing trap songs, and Koi Lee Ray has become one of the most popular mainstream rappers of the TikTok generation. I know where most is the daughter of Benzino, but I'm glad to see that she's from Hackensack, and that there's another jersey in on the charts. And last but not least, as someone who was a freshman in college during the year of Fetty Wap 2015, I have to give a huge shout out to the Remy boys. Fetty, Monty, and their crew had a chokehold on the country for a good year there, and while Fetty hasn't been able to fully recapture the magic of his 2015 run, it seems like he's still going and putting out some fun tracks these days. And that just about does it. Pretty much 50 years of New Jersey hip hop history, and I didn't even mention all the artists who moved to New Jersey in their later years. I know for a fact that Masta Ace, Q-Tip, and many more live up in North Jersey these days. So if you take all that into consideration, then I think New Jersey has to be right up there with New York and California. But maybe I'm a little biased in that. Make sure to let me know down in the comments who is your favorite hip-hop artist from New Jersey. I also have a playlist out on my Patreon with all my favorite songs from New Jersey artists. So go check that out if you're interested. Listed on the screen here is all of my current patrons, so thank you all so much. I got a lot more coming at you guys soon, so stay tuned, stay safe, and stay deaf. Thanks for watching.